All right, so we lost Tom Petty on October 2nd, just 18 days short of his 67th birthday, which would have been October 20th, 1950. Petty was born in Gainesville, Florida, true Southerner. I think that's where he gets the moniker of Southern Rock from, just an icon that's gone and we've lost him too soon. Yeah, so just to give a little context to this particular uh, episode we're doing, this is our third stab at doing this show. We ran into numerous technical difficulties, and we just all felt collectively that uh, we just weren't going to give this topic much uh, respect if we didn't make sure that we did it correct. Maybe it's the ghost of Tom Petty coming back to yeah. eat the scripts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Could be. Could be. But so, no, we definitely want to do it right and do it justice. So, so I actually want to start off with Todd and uh, find out, you know, what is, what is your first recollection or first uh, encounter with Mr. Tom Petty? It would probably be the Wilburys. I, that was one of the first. I mean, I'd heard Tom Petty songs before, but what really drew me in was a song that he did with the Wilburys, and it was his, his most popular one, Handle With Care. Oh, yeah. Really liked everything Good about song. that song. The, it's funny that you have those guys together. You've got Harrison, Orbison, Jeff Lynn. Bob Dylan, and you have all these guys that that have these unique voices, and that they made them harmonize. You know, it was it was so unique to have those guys with with a, with a harmony. I mean, it was just amazing. Yeah, they were all guitarists. I mean, what a great approach to music. So your introduction to Petty was when uh, he was at his strongest collaborative wise. I mean, he had a lot of huge monsters of music that he was now gathered with. So uh, you you came in at a really good time to be attracted to to Tom Petty's music. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it was just great music. They did a uh, a version of Runaway, Del Shannon's Runaway, and it was so cool to hear the influence from the Beatles from, right. through through Harrison, and then the ELO aspect of that song. Right. It was just amazing that you could pick up and, and hear the the influences from those guys. And it, it just goes to show Petty's. Um, loyalty to his friends i mean uh influence or actually a hero of his was uh del shannon and one thing i didn't know until recently was that um they wanted del shannon to take uh roy orbison's place wow that would have been cool yeah and then unfortunately uh shannon's not with us anymore and that never came to right fruition but it was just a, a testament to tom petty's um his craft and style and also uh, his friends. He was really, you know, he, he, he sought out his heroes, his musical heroes. And they always called him the ultimate collaborator. Mm-hmm. He was one of those guys that when he, um, when he got into a song, it was just something you could connect with. So, uh, Ken, what's your first experience or first interest that, uh, with Tom Petty that piqued you? American Girl. Uh, to me, it, we were talking earlier, and when somebody says Tom Petty's name, that's the first song right. that jumps in my head. And Past times at Richmond High. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that movie fit Teen America. Sure. If, it, if, it, if Petty music can be described as anything, it would take you to a place and a time, and you would smile. Yeah. Right. And that's what I enjoyed about everything about Tom Petty music. Um, it was just, how do you go wrong with all the hits that he's put out there? Now, for me, um, I'm a little bit more colorful because uh, uh, my first interaction or my first experience with, with Petty was through uh, Casey Kasem's uh, America's Top Ten Weekly Countdown. Right. As 1978, and there was this like new band making uh, you know making waves, and I, you know, I don't recall what place he fell in on that top 10 refugee was was the was a song that was being you know was making all the radio play see i remember that as a kid but i, I couldn't have told you who sung it you know yeah. what i mean and it, my brother actually was a bigger was a bigger fan than uh petty and uh damn the torpedoes than than i was yeah. so uh it was it my i guess my uh my attraction to him would come much later more more in high school so, uh, but he was also the the main reason why I actually picked up the guitar. So, wow. uh, yeah, the, just the for, from a guitar player's standpoint, the the simple chord progressions were something that would actually encourage a guitar player to continue playing. It, yeah. it, it was just something you could just sit down and play. But it was good to listen to. As simple as it was, it was such great music. Oh, absolutely, right. yeah, no doubt. Let's talk a little bit about early Tom Petty. Let's talk about Tom Petty, the young man, the boy. His musical influences, how he got started in, in music. 
And I, I found it interesting that Elvis Presley was actually his muse to get into the music world. He, he saw him on a, I guess his uncle was a set designer or set builder in, in Ocala, Florida. And that's, he saw Elvis. Yeah, I did read about that. that Which that. is odd because his music doesn't emulate Elvis music no, at all. Not so no, ever, not at all. yeah. And I guess shortly thereafter, he got his guitar. And it was kind of neat to find out that Don Felder was one of his early guitar instructors. Yeah. Right. That, that kind of tells you a little bit about the man. I mean, it, it really does, his style. And it really sticks with the southern rock genre, that's for sure. It, again, it'll let you see where the influences come from. Well, his, uh, I know his strongly, his musical interest came a lot from the birds. You know, Roger McGuinn, um, that, Chris Hillman, kind of jang- yeah. that jangly guitar. Yeah. Now, and, see, I can see a lot more of that in his music than I could Elvis. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can't think of any instance where an Elvis, other than the fact that he was a magnetic personality, maybe. Right. And he just liked the fact that this guy was playing guitar singing. Right. Even in interviews, he'll talk about his childhood and, and uh, his exposure to country music. And he's very quickly to point out that the country music that he listened to is not the country music that you're listening to these days. And he's, he's very adamant about making sure that nobody confuses country music today versus country music when... Yeah. You know, the word I always heard was Americana. Yeah. You know, uh, hit Tom Petty was about Americana. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, at one time he did a song called Rebels. Yes. And um, he took some heat years later. It, it's really funny how the world is with these musicians and these actors. Um, he had a rebel flag on the stage. It was a southern rock band. Yeah. And he took a lot of criticism for that, which years later, he actually came out and says, look, you know, it's, <laughs> it wasn't anything other than it was just a flag. And, it, you know, it's just unfortunate, but his connection to the South was is, is the lifeblood of his music. Sure. You know, well, I, like when I was in high school, um, you know, naturally, Damn the Torpedoes was uh, one of the first albums I remember. Don't recall what followed it but long after dark was probably out of out of all his albums probably not one of my least favorite didn't have a whole lot of you know commercial success but two albums that actually three southern accents was one right about when farm aid was was starting to kick off and become a become a thing you know feeds back into the um, the americana thing that you're talking about you know the american farmer was suffering and there was a song on there called spike and that kind of yeah, it's Spike. Yeah, Spike was kind of a was kind of a slap in the face for for somebody who was of that particular personality that you have to really listen to the song. But yeah, between that album and then uh, when Tom decided to take a break and came out with Full Moon Fever as a solo, as a solo, and he had already sort of met with uh, the guys that would become the uh, the Traveling Wilburys. And he kind of drew on all those influences to create this, in my opinion, was a phenomenal album, with the exception of Zombie Zoo, which, <laughs> which even right. Tom will tell you was a horrible freaking song. And he said he had thrown away better songs than that. But but so much good stuff on there. I mean, you got I Won't Back Down, sure. Free Falling, Running Down a Dream. I mean, great, iconic, petty songs. To me, that's like the peak. The peak of Petty, even when he wasn't with uh, his band, right? Just doing a solo career. To when me, even, that was the peak of Petty. Even the it was they were so well that even some of the the uh, movie industry included some of Petty's songs. Oh, in they, those. they they ate it up. They ate it up exactly. Commercials, movies. I mean, I won't back down. Right. Yeah. Look at. I mean, they still they play that to this day. They played it after the Las Vegas shootings. Right. right. You know. Oh, uh, somebody, don't even get me freaking started. Yeah, I know. It, oh, but God. they. The whole thing about, you know, it's funny because that song came about when somebody tried to burn his house down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the famous, yeah, yeah. The, the thing that he saved. It was back in 87 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. He was able to salvage his one of his prized guitars from that from that, from that that studio. But you learn a lot from, from him through, you know, various interviews that are available. Just get a little bit of insight into, you know, what, what made Tom Petty tick. Right. Well, it's just interesting that the the type of music that he did produce going back and we were talking about that, which struck me as just great cruising music. Sure. Something you did a lot of in the South, again, pointing back to the Southern rock. Oh, yeah. Anthem music that we used to, that we grew up on. Right. Man, just great cruising songs. That's back when cars were cool. That's back when you could pop a Tom Petty tape in and just cruise. You could listen to the whole thing. Right. A side, B side, it didn't matter. You just pop it in and go. 
Yeah, skipping kids, the zombie song, of course. Yeah, kids nowadays they just don't know how good they have it with DVDs and electric media. Right. I mean, back then we had eight tracks and cassettes. That band had to be good. And we had to yeah. keep we had to keep pens around so we could you know just in case that that uh, tape somehow uh, got <laughs> eaten by the by the cassette tape. Machine. Right. I, to, I remember having to learn to like songs on some tapes. It's like right. I'm going to begrudgingly <laughs> learn to like this song because fast forward yes. always got you in trouble. That's what well, got you there. Yeah, it, it would jam a tape up, and you, there's what back then they were what eleven and twelve dollars, right. which right. is like thirty now. Yes. And yeah, you know, it was it was crazy. Yeah, it was it was. There was a lot to those. Oh, yeah. So now let's, you know, favorite song, album, collaboration. Where are you? Where do you land there? Man, I'm going to have to go with Mary Jane's Last Dance. To me, (laughs) I I know it's later in his career, and I've said this before, Petty just got better with age. The older that guy got, the better his music got. And granted, that's not at the end of his career, but for whatever reason— the darkness of that song just spoke, man. I just just dug that song. Sure, it comes across as a drug song. Most people equate it to a drug song because of the name. Uh, and actually, the, the, the funny thing about the name is, the name was going to be something different. He wanted to call it Indiana Girl, right? Because the whole song is laced with that in the in, 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 in the in the lyrics. And Rick Rubin got hold of it and said, "No, nah, that's too cliche. I don't want to do that." Rick's like, "Let's call it something else." <laughs> so they came up with Mary Jane's Last Dance. And again, the, por- the the chord progression is very unique in that song. I like it. It's dark. The, the video is great. I like the video to the song. Mm-hmm. It really, to me, that's really what speaks to what the the, the song was really about. Sure. Not necessarily smoke and grass, but just the whole deep dark side of what was some of petty psyche. I don't know where he came up with that, but it was great. I, I dug it. I liked everything about it. How about you, Ken? Well, his most recent song, Somewhere Under Heaven, is probably my favorite. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, I heard it on the soundtrack of the movie Entourage and got to reading it and learning a little bit about it and didn't realize that it was a song that they did in 1994 originally when they were doing the Wildflowers album. Well, that, it, like, like Tom Petty said, is he's, he's put away better songs that have just sat for years until yeah. he figured out when a, a good time for And again, it goes to how much better he got with age. Sure. Well, I was glad he pulled that out because when him and uh, Mike Campbell wrote this and then mm-hmm. retracted it, it was, it, it, I put it up there with one of my favorite guitar ballads. I, I just like the power of that guitar. Sure. I think um, for me, uh, Learning to Fly. Yeah. It's one of my favorite songs. Free Falling. Running you know, down, running down a dream. That's a that's a yeah. that was a, that was my close second right there. The waiting. Like when you listen to songs like the waiting and all those things like that, it was from different collaborations. Uh, I think um, I really liked the one he did, "Biting Time" with Chris Hillman. Mm-hmm. Luckily, he did that before he passed. That sure, was, that's a that's a gem we definitely get to hold on to. Johnny Cash of all people, the Man in Black, Tom Petty. Yeah, did a song with Johnny Cash in '96, "The Running Kind." I and. You know, the thing I like about Cash and Petty together is they, you know, they're both iconic in their areas of music. I mean, they're the kind of guys that bucked the corporations. Yeah, they're definitely trailblazers. Yeah, and that's what I liked about that collaboration because they were both like, you know what, give the middle finger to the man. Yeah. We're our own musicians and we're doing it our way. Yeah, Petty was fiercely... He he made sure that he re- maintained artistic control over everything that he did. Or he went through and, and he earned the ability to be able to tell studios, "Hey, I know how you wanted to do it, but this is how it's going to happen." Right. One of my favorite quotes from Tom Petty was, "I didn't write my songs to be orange juice commercials." Beautiful. <laughs> I yeah. love that. And this is the guy from Florida, the right. orange juice capital of the world. Right. You know, and and I really, you know, he didn't let corporate sponsors take over his tours. He wanted the fans to be able to enjoy the music. He wanted. He even got into a legal battle with a record label over a dollar. Oh yeah, the old uh, superstar tax. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, when when Petty's coming through, coming up through the through the seventies, he's coming up through a time when music, for the most part, was either something you heard through the radio or you went to a concert, and video was you know just slowly making its way into you know households. Well, you know, many people would argue the, on the video aspect that uh, that was MTV, actually. There was people precursor to it. There was a group out of Carmel, California. Yeah. yeah. For a show called Pop Clips that was um, basically video driven. It was on Nickelodeon Channel of all places. How funny. And uh, then you get you get MTV. And it, it, it took the musician from 
laying down tracks on cassettes and albums to producing full-blown videos. And what's really funny is Petty found a way to make that work for him. Yes. Because the whole Alice in Wonderland, don't come around yeah. here anymore. Some of those videos are iconic. He it, had some of the most creative, that's he for did. sure. Right. And it was all based on what you were talking about earlier, him coming up through the ranks, paying his dues, working that, taking fans in consideration. And I think that's the biggest thing I take away from his style is that he is a fan first guy. Right. Yeah. When he writes, when he entertains, when he makes it, whatever he's doing, he wants to make sure that the fans are going to like that. And that's what really brings you into Tom Petty. The two iconic albums for me are Full Moon Fever, which, you know, like, like I said, just great tracks, great crew that helped put that music together. And if that record was a child and it grew up, it grew up to be Wildflowers. Right. Yeah. Wildflowers to me was DB or is a CD that I'll play over and over and over again. All the tracks on it were just outstanding. Just well written songs. Great, uh, great musicians played on that on that on the making of that record. Just nothing really comes close to to what that that CD means to me. I'm hoping that there's a lot of releases of these songs that didn't get put out because. I, I got a feeling there's some fantastic gems in there. Um, knowing this guy, his catalog okay. of music is incredible. Oh, yes. Uh, it, it's, it's funny. Speaking of tributes, the one thing that I remember most about Tom Petty was the 2004 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And he was on stage with George Harrison's son and, they, and Prince. And all, his, his, all the people he played with were on stage. And they did My Guitar Gently Weeps. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember this one. Which was a phenomenal My Prince, God. Prince solo as well. Dude, yeah. he crushed it. Another artist that we lost that's, oh, I'm sad he's gone. Yeah, gone yeah. too soon. Yeah. yeah. He, Another rebel, too, by the way. Very you know? talented. Yeah. The, the talent in that guy. I mean, again, it's it's almost comparable with Petty, the, the amount of talent that was there yeah. and how, how his career went. Just up. It went up as he went along instead of, you know, most bands start out, they start out great. They just fall off. Between those two guys, they kind of paired each other, and it just goes up from there. And they have a lot of similar views towards the corporate record labels. Yeah, I mean, did. that whole former artist formerly known as Prince, when he, he yes. basically was under contract, he was, I'm going to put out some real junk, and when I got this thing, you guys are going to get some good music. Right. Exactly. Tom Petty, early in his career, when they uh, they wanted to pull Petty off away from his band, right? he found a way to get all his friends back in it with yeah. him. And, and that's... To me, that's what the music industry is about. It's not the crap we get today. Right. The formulaic crap. And that's what I'm going to miss most about Tom Betty is the fact that Tom was the driver of his fan bus. It's, it's cool to look at the strategy. You it know what is. I mean? The guy yeah. really had to work a strategy he did. to get where he was. I mean, it's, it shows a level of intelligence. Quiet sophistication yeah, is how I, I would I say. Yeah. The, uh, you know, since we've lost him, you know, the, the, the one thing that I will say that I'm not overly pleased at is that you know the artists that are out there now that are struggling or trying to make a name for themselves for the most part are using Tom and his his you know his his catalog as a as as a ladder they're 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 clamoring for any kind of track that he could put out now that they want to put their name and their stamp on that song like Coldplay but, yeah. well okay that <laughs> the one that gets me the most was this most recent there's actually two performances I saw here recently. While one wasn't horrible, it was not something that was in this. Oh. This, this particular I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I'm only going to say is it with this material is not in oh. this particular artist's wheelhouse, but it just kind of goes to the type of activity that I don't particularly care for with with some artists. Is, Hey, I'm going to... I'm going to attach it. my... Say it. I want to see Kim I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to attach my name... My listeners. Oh! I, I, I'm going to uh, attach God. my name to uh, this per, this artist's song. And, you know, mm. hopefully people will walk away thinking this is a, a memorable performance. Yeah. You see the, a lot of that right now. You and do. the And the other one is, which I think was opportunistic, was the Saturday Night Live performance with Jason Aldean. Yeah. And... Him playing, I won't back down. I believe yeah. what it was. You mean Chicken Man running off the stage? See, see yeah. I don't. I don't even know. I said I. I, I He's taking a lot of heat for that. I couldn't tell you yeah. who who Jason Aldean is because yeah. I, I I don't listen to his music. Yeah. Right. But again, it was one of those things where you know how dare you use 
this man who kind of paved the way and yeah. and opened a lot of freaking doors. He was walking doors on a grave by doing that. That's yeah, yes. you're yeah. using this man's this this man's catalog, his legacy, as a, his legacy as a ladder to further your career along. Yeah, no, look at, this, look at me, look at me. This dude wallowed in the dirt to get to where he was. He wrote all of his own music, collaborated with anybody that he could, just because that's the kind of artist that he was. Well, the fans redeemed that at the uh, University of Florida Gainesville uh, I saw during that. the halftime performance, and they sang a tribute to Tom Petty. Right, that was the coolest thing ever. It was, it was what I won't back down. Yeah, and it was the coolest. I mean, to me, that was the best tribute. That trumps anything any artist ever did on TV or stage yeah. or on the radio. That should have been like a Guinness World uh, World Book record or something. Uh, it, or something it was, like yeah, that. It, it was one of those Largest moments. Sing along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of those moments that you just I, I I saved it. It was that good. It was just so cool to see people come together and sing one of the one of Tom Petty's great well, it songs. It just shows the difference between what's plastic banana and what's really heartfelt. You know, right. it's, yeah. it's so cool right. to see the two juxtaposed to each other. I like that plastic banana. Yeah, I'm use totally. that again. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, fake fruit. That's yeah. that that definitely. <laughs> It encapsulates guy, my it? feeling towards Miley Cyrus. Yeah, well. and, and I actually hope that they someday listen to this this uh, yeah. this podcast, and so I can tell them, "Hey, fuck, fuck you, Miley you. Sap- Cyrus," and Jason Aldean go go no with use the dick. One of you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not even going to give her another second's thought. That yeah. that that is the most. If I was her dad, I'd slap her mama. Oh I'm yeah, and that's that. the other thing is is yeah. old freaking Billy Ray was sitting there in a chair playing a guitar. Uh, yeah, and that he was can just, play guitar. Yeah, so I didn't know that. Well. He can play guitar according to a camera. Yeah, because achy, breaky heart is what three chords? Oh um, my god, it's <laughs> fucking horrible. Yeah. horrible Tom song. Petty never covered that. Did anybody no. notice? No, but Tom no. Petty never <laughs> covered the achy, breaky heart. That is hysterical. Yeah, yeah. never did it. No yeah. Southern rock guy. So. <laughs> well, all I know is, tells you a little bit about that guy's music. Yeah, forty years of phenomenal music. Yeah, from a guy that shaped a lot of our early days. Yeah, right. Things we did, people we hung out with. Um, moments in time that we get to share for, cherish forever, yeah. which is which is what you look for in a musician. You take a guy that you can pick any part of, of, of a ten year span and say, "Oh, that song was big. I remember that. I remember when that was that that came out." I, I like I said, I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss his music dearly. I wish I'd have spent more time going to more of his concerts. I just kind of quit going to concerts there right. for a while. But um, I, it was somebody I would love to see live in a small venue, mm-hmm. which I think that would be like an education beyond sure. music. And uh, I'm going to miss that. And it's, it's unfortunate, but luckily we have these uh, great songs that are captured now for eternity. And um, I look forward to spending more and more time becoming intimate with some of the songs I may not have thought about earlier. Right. Yeah. Well, God rest and God speed, Tom Petty. Yeah. Gonna miss uh gonna miss those songs. God rest uh God rest your soul, Tom Petty. 